tonight. Yes. According to the American Academy of Dermatology, half of all newly diagnosed cancers are skin cancer. Using the right sunscreen is the foundation for protection, of course, but skin care experts say that's not all you can or even should be doing to protect your skin. Every moment in the sun is an attack on your skin. You are constantly being bombarded by ultraviolet rays that slowly age you, slowly wrinkle you, and can cause skin cancer. While you're out shopping, driving, even sitting near a window, you're being exposed to cancer-causing rays. The amount of UV radiation that you get is, is cumulative. The damage is cumulative. So the more ultraviolet radiation you get, the more skin damage you're going to have. A sunscreen with UVA protecting ingredients is a must. Look for zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, or Parasol 1789 on the label. But sunscreen alone is not enough to protect your skin, even when you're fully dressed. Well, the sun protection factor, we call SPF, it varies from the type of clothes that you use. But for example, a white t-shirt has an SPF of 2 or 3. There are companies that make sun protective clothing, which although expensive, can block out most of the sun's damaging rays. A cheaper alternative is a new product you mix in with your laundry, a wash-in sunscreen for your clothes. And the trials show that this does reduce the amount of UV exposure and reduce the sun damage. When we look under the microscope at the skin, it does reduce the amount of sun damage caused by the sun. Another area of exposure, glass, even with tinting. The colored tinting that we all do to keep our cars cooler in the summer doesn't block UVA rays. So you're not really helping yourself as far as sun damage with the tinted shields. There is a clear tint that will block the sun's cancer-causing rays which can be used alone or with window tinting. Bottom line, skincare experts agree protecting yourself from skin cancer goes beyond sunscreen. And the more you do, the better. We're going to have a lot of young looking people around in 30 years of people will start using all these new innovations. That's something to look forward to. So they'd just be wasting your money. Health specialist Marilyn Mitzel set out to investigate these cream claims. It sounds like a dream come true. According to the directions, all you've got to do is rub your body down with a little cream once a day and soon your saggy skin will be firm and your lumpy body bumps will be smooth. If there was a pill or a body cream that I could take and put on my body and it would firm it all up, that would be great. The hope of that promise has triggered a new multi-million dollar business that has firming creams flying off store shelves. There is one for just about every part of your body, stomach, legs, arms, buttocks, even breasts. But the million dollar question is, do they really work? The scientific side of me says no because I don't think that these are absorbed. However, the female side of me says maybe. To find out the truth about these cream claims, we put several of them to the test. We bought three different brands ranging from inexpensive to very expensive. Let's begin with Tara Horowitz. She is trying one of the cheaper brands from the drugstore for $7. After five weeks of using it every day, the results. I did feel a little bit of a difference, but I guess it wasn't exactly what I wanted it to be. Upon examining the ingredients, our expert says Tara's results, or maybe we should say lack of results, are not surprising. But I have all, a bunch of different botanical ingredients and vitamin E, but I really don't see anything in here that would cause your skin to be any firmer. Let's move on to Helene Diner. She used a $50 firming cream purchased at a department store. Five weeks later, her answer is... I feel it's a little better, but it's after the first two weeks, there's no change at all. Just looks about the same. Our expert concurs that it may not just be Helene's imagination working here. It seems there are some ingredients in this cream that could make skin feel firmer. However, for $50, I, I think that investment would be better spent on sunscreen. And last but not least, Ada Shade is using the most expensive lotion at 75 bucks a bottle. Her answer surprised us. Within about a week's time, I did see quite a significant difference in the smoothness and tone. The elasticity in my skin was just wonderful. Even our expert was surprised to discover that this firming lotion does actually contain an ingredient called hyaluronic acid that helps skin hold water. So by putting this on your skin, you're holding on to more water and that is that puffs out your wrinkles and that is what gives you the firming effect. Our final answer, it appears that if you're hoping these cream claims will turn out to be true, you've got to spend the big bucks and make sure they contain hyaluronic acid, 
Otherwise, you may be wasting your time and money. And know that the results last only as long as you use the cream. A better lasting option? Plain old-fashioned exercise. On special assignment, I'm Marilyn Mitzel, 7 News. And one more note, body firming creams and lotions are classified as cosmetics, not drugs, which means manufacturers do not have to prove whether they actually work as they claim. That is something you may want to consider before shelling out your hard-earned money. Now, and not just fixing the problems once they occur. The FDA is expected to approve a new pill any day now that could treat baldness in men. And as you can imagine, there are clinics full of patients waiting for this new medication. And that medication is called Propecia. It was given tentative approval by the FDA last month. Nearly 9 out of 10 men who tested the drug maintained or even increased the amount of hair on their scalps. In tonight's Eye on Health, find out if you or someone you know should take this much-awaited medication. Let's make it just the front back. Jack Marrera recently noticed his hairline is receding. The 30-year-old public relations executive is worried about losing more hair, especially in this looks-oriented world. The workforce out there, it's, it's very competitive, and you want to look your best. You definitely want to look your best. So if you could do something about it, perfect. So Jack turned to this new clinic at the University of Miami. He's among a number of patients awaiting a new drug to treat baldness. The pill is called Propecia. Clinical studies of it are just completed. Those studies show that 65% of the men with baldness atop their heads increased hair growth. In men with frontal baldness, 52% regrew hair. Ooh, Dr. Leslie Bauman says Jack is an ideal patient because he wants to treat his baldness at an early stage. The wonderful thing about this drug is that if you started early enough, it may actually prevent hair loss. And a Rogaine solution can also be prescribed along with Propecia. Patients who've had hair implants may also benefit by taking the drug. Well, the great thing about this new drug is that it can be used in conjunction with surgical procedures such as hair transplantation to improve the longevity of the graft. Propecia works by suppressing an enzyme known to cause baldness. It's a weakened version of a popular prostate drug called Proscar. When this drug is FDA approved, only men may take it. Jack is very hopeful that Propecia may help his hairline. He didn't expect to lose his hair at his young age. My father has more hair than I do right now, and he's 65. <laughs> That's not fair. Now, some final facts. The drug does have some side effects for some men. About 2% of the men who took the drug had decreased libido and other sexual problems. But doctors say those problems eventually disappear. FDA approval of Propecia is expected very soon. The drug maker Merck will announce the price of that drug once it is approved. Well, if you have a little one around the house, the medical science now knows how to slow down, even reverse visible signs of aging. A look at the tricks anyone can use to turn back time. Amy Tunick is just past the 40-year mark and starting to worry about how she'll look in the future. If there's something I can do to enhance myself, mm -hmm. I'm willing to do it. Skincare experts say no one is ever too young to start thinking about their skin and aging. We definitely can slow the clock and it's very important for people to practice prevention. The most important thing you can do is wear sunscreen every time you leave your home, even if you're just coming into work. It's your best defense against aging, especially in the hot Florida sun. It's hard to tell an 18 year old to worry about wrinkles, but it begins you know, very young. And you can slow the hands of time with an arsenal of anti-aging treatments and products. Tried and true for skin rejuvenation is Retin-A, which has been proven to help stop collagen from breaking down. Botox injections erase existing wrinkles and prevent the formation of new ones by temporarily paralyzing underlying facial muscles. Collagen injections can plump up deep folds and lines. Then there are lasers, bleaches, and peels to remove skin discolorations and even out skin tones. Although all of these are non-invasive procedures, following this anti-aging routine is not cheap. Treatments can cost from fifty to over fifteen hundred dollars. Still, some say it's worth any price to be able to turn back time. People tell me I look younger than, how, than my age, and when I hear that, it just makes my day. Now, some doctors say that if you start early enough, you might actually be able to keep your skin looking a decade or even two younger than your actual age. Wouldn't that be nice? Without major surgery either. Glenna? Uh-huh. Thank you. <laughs> Boy, did this put a dent in my source of I knowledge. Know, Contrary know. to popular belief, vitamin E is not the answer. 
Health and Family Reporter Dana Gonzalez is here to explain why and why. I, 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 I can't understand well, Tony, this. I was surprised too. A new study was conducted right here at the University of Miami. The researchers themselves were shocked by the results. You will be too when you see what happened when vitamin E was applied to surgical scars. The oil inside these vitamin capsules is supposed to work wonders on scars. At least that's what we've been told. From the mo moment I can remember when anything happened, my mother would always tell us to put vitamin E on any scarring that we had or any cuts or wounds or anything. Dr. Leslie Bauman's mom told her the same thing, so she put vitamin E to the test. These slides show the surprising results. This half of the scar where the vitamin E was is red and swollen. Dr. Bauman took 15 patients that just had surgery. On half of the scar, she put an ointment called Aquaphor. On the other half, that same ointment plus vitamin E. And we found that in 100% of the patients, the vitamin E either made the scar worse or no better. A third of our patients had an allergy to the vitamin E that caused redness and itching and was very unpleasant for them. After seeing evidence of the results, Pamela England says, I have a 17-month-old 17 17 month and I know that there's going to be lots of times that she's going to fall and have bumps and scrapes and I would have used vitamin E and now I won't. Dr. Bauman no longer recommends vitamin E to her patients. So what can you do to make scars heal better? I recommend that they cover it with an antibacterial ointment, such as polysporin, and cover with a bandage, a dressing. A simple band-aid is better than nothing. Three of the patients in the vitamin E study had to drop out within 48 hours because of skin inflammation. The researchers' conclusions? Vitamin E does not improve the cosmetic appearance of scars and leads to a high incidence of allergic skin reactions. That is amazing. And in some it? cases, worsen the scar. In some cases, worse. You saw the red, the red scars. Mm -hmm. Those were the scars treated with vitamin E. My goodness. goodness I, mean, I lived on the vitamin E during my chicken pox. I know. Two weeks. But you look great. <laughs> wow. After yesterday, I needed that. <laughs> Thanks, Diana. Well, we certain parts of your body, you know what I mean, and uh, put it in perhaps other parts of your body. Apparently, now you can do just that. In fact, a new cutting-edge procedure can actually create something called cosmetic cleavage. Seven's health specialist, Marilyn Mitzel, is going to show us how. Okay, Liz. The time has come to spill those lips. What's in them? Are they wax? Wow! Collagen injections, breast, and Gore-Tex implants. These are just some of the many materials used today to pump up different parts of the body. Gaining in popularity are fat transfers. Surgeons take fat from one part of the body and transfer it to another. The nice thing about fat is it comes from your own body, so there's no chance of any allergies or any rejection. And some people feel more comfortable getting things from their own body implanted. One of the big concerns doctors had in the past about fat transfers is whether they would last. Recent studies show that about 50% of the fat will stay in place if the procedure is done correctly. What it does is that effect will last forever. Beverly Hills surgeon Dr. Toby Mayer has been transferring and implanting fat for more than 15 years. He recently came up with a new place to transplant fat when a Hollywood actress, unhappy with the look of her breast implants, came to see him. On film, you could tell that this was obvious with her clothes off. This looked like breast implants because this was too bony and irregular. So we were able to fill this area with fat and create a more natural area. He calls it clevoplasty. Here's how it works. Extra fat is liposuction from the body and then transferred to the bony area of the chest to create softer cleavage. It's not meant to replace breast implantation at all. It's meant to augment breast implantation and in those women who haven't had breast implantation or that very bony and irregular central chest. The biggest problem is finding a cosmetic surgeon who'll do it for you. Dr. Mayer is the inventor and probably the only one in the country performing clevoplasty. So, if you are interested, you'd have to make a trip to Hollywood. On special assignment, I'm Marilyn Mitzel, 7 News. Millions of dollars on it every year and throw much of it away because it doesn't match their skin or it's irritating. Well, that is about to change as a new type of medical makeup hits the market. <laughs> It's made to match your skin. You don't have to worry about people going, oh, she's wearing a ton of makeup. 
Angela DeLore is excited about her new makeup. It is made especially for women, or men for that matter, who have facial flaws, like scars or discoloration. In Angela's case, a strawberry-colored birthmark. Okay, Dermatologist Dr. Leslie Bauman from the University of Miami School of Medicine helped develop this so-called custom color foundation. Not only does it give you good coverage, it uses state-of-the-art technology that can match any skin color, up to 42 billion shades. A patient comes in and we take measurements with a computer called a spectrophotometer, and that gives me different color readings. It's exactly like the Sherman Williams taking a paint chip and matching it. It's the same idea. This makeup was actually designed for people with serious skin problems. It is fragrance-free, and there's nothing in it that can irritate the skin. It's not as heavy as the other regular makeups. Like with the other regular makeups, I have like, I feel like my face is like uh, really covered up, like really, you know, really thick. And that, Angela says, not only makes her look better on the outside, but feel better on the inside. It gives you a lot of confidence that you know you look good. Right now, this breakthrough makeup is available only through the University of Miami School of Medicine, but eventually will be sold in department stores. It costs about $50 for a three-month supply. Vina Rosenberg saw that time was taking a toll on her skin. My skin had developed major brown spots in uh, many different places. Then Vina got the chance to take part in a study to test a new line of skincare products containing soy. After the study, the brown spots virtually disappeared and my skin is more even toned and smoother. Dr. Jeanette Graff, a clinical researcher on soy, conducted the study for the maker of a new line of soy-based beauty products. Many of my patients were receiving compliments from others who didn't know that they were in the study, that their skin looked more radiant and glowing. Research showed that soy can reduce the appearance of discoloration and redness caused by sun exposure and acne. University of Miami dermatologist Dr. Leslie Bauman says it may do even more than that. What soy is going to be good for really is helping increase the blood flow to the skin, help increase the thickness of the skin, maybe improve uh, the amount of collagen and elastin in the skin. While the study results have yet to be replicated, it is possible that further research may show that soybeans are not only good for our bodies, but a natural beauty bonanza for our skin. I think it's terrific um, because I much prefer to put natural soy on my skin than uh, chemical treatment or something that can be irritating to the skin. There's no drawbacks. It's inexpensive. It's naturally occurring and it actually works as opposed to many of the things that we have. The results of the soy skin care study were presented at a recent meeting of the American Academy of Dermatology. With your Good Health Report this morning, I'm Chris Lead Vessels. We're talking about rosacea, and now there's a new laser treatment for it. South Florida, in fact, is one of the few places in the country where it's available. Health and Family Reporter Diana Gonzalez has the details. This new laser was recently approved to treat blood vessels in the face. There are only two in the entire country, and one is being used right here at the University of Miami. It's called the Dornier laser. Karen Del Rio has rosacea, and the laser is zapping away prominent blood vessels on her face. Dr. Leslie Bauman says this works better than other lasers because it has a longer wavelength. So this laser can go down, get the deep blood vessels, and it heats them up so they, they coagulate and they close off and they don't bleed. The other lasers would break open the blood vessels and you would bleed under the skin and bruise. That's exactly what happened to Karen with a pulse dye laser. This is what she looked like seven days after being treated. It took me about three weeks to completely heal from the bruising to go away and the swelling of my face. With the Dornier laser, there is no bruising. It's basically instantaneously where she pulses you and, and the uh, vein is gone and you may have a little redness, but that goes away by the end of the day. And there's one more important benefit to the patient. The new lasers hurt a lot less also. It feels like a little rubber band popping you. Not bad at all. So far, doctors say they haven't seen any real side effects, but it hasn't been widely used yet. In Miami, Diana Gonzalez, NBC6. Damaged cities, thousands have had successful laser procedures. But now some doctors are coming forward to tell us they have cut back their use of one of the most well-known lasers used to remove wrinkles. Because, as you are about to see in very graphic pictures, even when a doctor does everything right, the results can go very wrong. Yvonne Hirschman and Jerry Wiskin, two women who went through hell to look good. Well, it was burning and 
itching and just on fire. No one had ever, ever, ever shown me anything, you know, like what I went through. This is Jerry six months after laser resurfacing to smooth away the lines from her face. It's depressing looking at these. The laser burned away her skin. This is the side of my face. Um, this is the left side. There are areas quite open, quite deep. Here are photographs of Yvonne just a few weeks after her laser procedure. I was burned seriously. I was tremendously burned. Uh, I oozed for months and my skin wouldn't grow back. And she developed infections. I was in the hospital twice, uh, I think for a total of about 39 or 40 days, and it was an agony. There are about a dozen different types of lasers used for cosmetic procedures. Jerry and Yvonne were both treated with CO2 lasers. The CO2 laser targets water, that's how it works. It, um, it heats up the water in your skin and burns the top layer of your skin off. Dr. Leslie Bauman is a dermatologist at the University of Miami. While she does research work with other types of lasers, she refuses to use the CO2. She's seen some disastrous results. Because we're the University of Miami, we see all the complications. So we've had a series of eight patients who were treated elsewhere with CO2 laser and they didn't heal for whatever reason. We don't know why. There isn't anything about them that we could have predicted would make them not heal. So that's a little concerning. Good morning again, everyone. As Dr. Loretta Seraldo, who gives skin advice on NBC6, gave away her expensive CO2 laser. Here's why. I saw a number of patients in consultation who had had pretty severe laser outcomes whether it was scarring, very prolonged redness, severe acne, terrible discoloration, ranging to turning totally white like the color of my coat. And I felt that these were complications that I would not be able to live with. How common are these complications? According to a study, permanent discoloration can occur in 2 to 16 percent of patients. Infections, 4 percent. Researchers point out these procedures are generally safe and precise but add even with proper patient selection, correct technique, and good post-operative care, unexpected complications can occur. Now these CO2 lasers have been out five, six, seven years, and we're starting to see long-term problems. The beauty about the CO2 laser is that it can treat multiple problems. Dr. Judith Kroll is a South Miami dermatologist. She showed us a case where a CO2 laser worked wonders. Vincent Morelli suffers from a condition that deformed his nose. Dr. Kroll used a CO2 laser to remove excess tissue and sculpt his nose back to normal. Uh, nothing but praise <laughs> for how the, uh, the outcome of it was. But for wrinkles, Dr. Kroll now mostly uses a so-called cool touch laser that does not vaporize the outer layer of the skin. The CO2 laser now, I don't use a lot for full face um, wrinkles. There's still some very good candidates out there and for them it's the ideal, but it's not the first treatment I'll run to. Five years ago when lasers really started hitting the market, do you think people weren't really aware of the damage that they could do? I think there's too quick a jump into new technology and from my perspective is that there's a real push to be the first one on the block to do it, to have it, to own it, to, to get it done. It took years for Yvonne and Jerry to recover from their laser treatments. Special makeup helps conceal the scars and discoloration. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God for uh, people that care for <laughs> creams and ointments and time. The product manager for Luminous, a CO2 laser manufacturer, told us their product is being used less, but not because of complications or anything bad. He said patients are looking for quicker recovery time. Luminous is now marketing a different product that does not affect the outer layer of skin. You should always ask your doctor about the risks of any procedure you're thinking about undergoing. Anything to do with these unlined celebrities? Think again. The cure du jour is Botox. It's injected into wrinkles and temporarily paralyzes the muscle, meaning that you can't wrinkle there. It is um, a toxin that we use in minute doses, but it's natural. Everybody wants a natural ingredient. Well, this is as natural as you can get it. So what about me? Are you ready to, you know, inject me a little bit? Oh, you look great. You don't need it. Just a little sunscreen.
<laughs> just a little sunscreen. You heard it here. Bye bye. Muchísimas gracias, Andrea y Guillermo. Muy buenas noches. Estamos en la temporada de verano y por supuesto que a todos nos gusta disfrutar del sol y la playa. Esta noche quiero mostrarles los cuidados que debemos tener para evitar el cáncer de piel. Tal vez quiera tomar nota de la siguiente información. Durante los últimos años, los dermatólogos están exhortando a sus pacientes que eviten o disminuyan la exposición al sol debido a que los rayos ultravioletas son la causa primaria de cáncer de piel. La manera de prevenirlo es con protector solar cuyo uso debe ser diario. Muchas personas no entienden que el sol puede um, entrar en las ventanas. Entonces, si ustedes están adentro o afuera, su protección es muy necesaria. Aproximadamente 47.700 nuevos casos de cáncer de piel se han diagnosticado este año y otros 7.700 morirán de esta enfermedad. Es importante destacar que el protector que se utiliza diariamente no debe ser el mismo que el que se aplica en la playa. Si usted va a la playa es necesario por un sol protección que va a trabajar en la agua. Um, por ejemplo, muchos diferentes tipos de waterproof sol protección es bueno por la playa. Pero es necesario reaplicar la sol protección cada 30 minutos o cada hora. A partir del próximo mes de diciembre de este año va a haber nuevas regulaciones para los protectores solares. Por ejemplo, va a ser mínimo protector solar, que es el que actualmente es un SPF menor de 12, moderado protector solar, que es el que actualmente es SPF entre 12 y 30, y con alto protector solar, que es mayor de 30. Si uno no le pone protector... Se le sale la piel, puede dar cáncer a los niños, tú sabes, o cualquier persona. En el momento de comprar un protector solar debemos tener en cuenta que además de saber el grado de protección, lo más importante son los ingredientes, lo que nunca deben faltar son el dióxido de titanio y el dióxido de zinc. Estos compuestos permanecen en la superficie de la piel, no se absorben y no se han reportado alergias a ellos. En este caso nos estamos refiriendo al protector solar de uso diario. Bueno, es de vital importancia cuidar nuestra piel, incluso desde temprana edad. Debemos recordar que el cáncer de piel aparece después de varios años de exposición al sol. Con esto, me despido por hoy de ustedes, que tengan muy buenas noches. Continuamos con Sandra y con Guillermo. Our skin cancer. Using the right sunscreen is the foundation for protection, of course, but skin care experts say that's not all you can or even should be doing to protect your skin. Every moment in the sun is an attack on your skin. You are constantly being bombarded by ultraviolet rays that slowly age you, slowly wrinkle you, and can cause skin cancer. While you're out shopping, driving, even sitting near a window, you're being exposed to cancer-causing rays. The amount of UV radiation that you get is, is cumulative. The damage is cumulative. So the more ultraviolet radiation you get, the more skin damage you're going to have. A sunscreen with UVA protecting ingredients is a must. Look for zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, or parasol 1789 on the label. But sunscreen alone is not enough to protect your skin, even when you're fully dressed. Well, the sun protection factor, we call SPF, it varies from the type of clothes that you use. But for example, a white t-shirt has an SPF of two or three. There are companies that make sun protective clothing, which although expensive, can block out most of the sun's damaging rays. A cheaper alternative is a new product you mix in with your laundry, a wash-in sunscreen for your clothes. And the trials show that this does reduce the amount of UV exposure and reduce the sun damage. When we look under the microscope at the skin, it does reduce the amount of sun damage caused by the sun. Another area of exposure, glass, even with tinting. The colored tinting that we all do to keep our cars cooler in the summer doesn't block UVA rays. So you're not really helping yourself as far as sun damage with the tinted shields. There is a clear tint that will block the sun's cancer-causing rays which can be used alone or with window tinting. Bottom line, skin care experts agree protecting yourself from skin cancer goes beyond sunscreen. And the more you do, the better. We're going to have a lot of young looking people around in 30 years of people will start using all these new innovations. That's something to look forward to, so find out more about what...